All right, good morning, crocheters. How is everyone today? Hopefully everything's working fine on the last end. Let's see, I've got yarn kind of all over my desk, so I need to move it so I can see what's going on. I'll just throw it back there. That'll work. All right. <clears throat> So today um, I decided we would do a, well, not really I decided, someone suggested last week that maybe we do a Q&A, which I thought was a great idea because this um, week has mostly been working on like putting patterns in the computer. Um, I got the sloth all typed up and in the computer, so that's good. So it's um, just about ready to go to testers. Um, and I've done a little bit of work on the Darcy Deer Crochet Along. So it hasn't been a lot of, like, here are new projects that I've been working on. It's it's all kind of the same, um, I guess, stuff everyone's seen already. So today we're going to do Q&A. Uh, good morning, Linda. Good morning, Golden and Emily. How are you ladies doing? Um, it looks like Golden has hopped in here with a question. She said she would like to get the pattern for the bigger, bigger panda bear that you made of the chubby one. Um, so awesome. Let's see. And then um, it'd be nice to have the pattern for it and for the pillow too. Okay. So Golden, on this big, big panda, it's the exact same pattern as the chubby panda. The only difference being the yarn that is used. So these are the same patterns. Um, so I'm fairly certain, Golden, you're a subscriber to my email list. So you should have that one from joining. So you should have the pattern for this. The only difference is that this one is made with jumbo size yarn, which um, I have been able to find at Joann's. Um, there are some different brands that you can find at like Walmart. Um, it's going to be a size seven yarn. It's nice and huge. Um, so that's really the only difference on this one. Um, then as far, let me put this guy back. Then as far as the pillow goes, the koala pillow that I made, I didn't actually write up a pattern for that. Um, I did it based on the koala head and I just took out any rows that like gave it depth. So I only did increasing and decreasing rows. So that was, that's the answer to that one. Good morning, Deborah and J Baby. Um, Deborah says she's had lots of questions this week. All right, go ahead and ask away. Uh, Linda says this week she finished uh, Penelope Pig. Nice. And the Hedgehog, way to go. Um, <clears throat> Linda says, my question is, after you make the magic circle, do you weave in the end that you pull tight? Um, I actually don't usually, I just pull it tight and I just leave it in there and I haven't had any issues with it coming undone. Um, it's certainly something that if you wanted to like make sure that it was extra secure, you could probably like crochet over, um, it for a couple of stitches or you could, or you could weave it in, as you said, um, for me, it's on the inside of the project. And so I've, I've never worried about that particularly um yeah so that hopefully that helps um does anyone else have any questions <laughs> debbie says can you make a video on touching on attaching the head on the animals yes i can do that actually i'm Trying to remember, I thought I did make one. Maybe I just forgot to post it. That would be kind of embarrassing, but also not um, not too surprising. I'm a little bit spacey. Let me go find a. Let me go find a pencil <laughs> really fast. Do, 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 do. All right, not a pencil, but it was the first thing I found. <laughs> so make a video on attaching the head. Okay, 
items added to my list. Golden says, um, thank you, thank you on your baby elephant and the large elephant is the same. Is it the same pattern direction? So I'm guessing what you're asking here, Golden, is um, are the big elephant pattern and the baby elephant pattern the same, only using different yarn? Um, no, they're not. They are very, they, like this, they have the same kind of finished style, but they're very different um, patterns. One is scaled up and yeah, one is smaller. Took a long time to make both of them, but uh, that's part of learning, at least for me. All right, does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> All right, Debbie says, um, how do we know when it's too much stuffing? I think I overstuff, then I take some out, then it seems loose. I think I might be overthinking it. So that is a good question. Um, for me, I usually go kind of based on feel. Um, if I'm ever like seeing the stuffing in between or the nylon in between the gauge, then I can kind of assess that like maybe this is uh, this is probably too much because most of my things we use the sloth here as an example, like he's pretty like he's pretty stiff. You know, there's there's not a lot of give here, um, but you also can't like see through the holes. Um, I kind of recommend maybe overstuffing a little bit versus understuffing because as, as time goes on, the stuffing tends to compact a little bit. So let me show you an example. <clears throat> so the alpaca is one that my daughter likes to steal and ride. And so she holds him by his ears like this. And then she just like pretends to ride the back. And, and I think because he gets pulled up here and like the, the neck is kind of a weaker spot, it's pretty like, like, do you see how loose that is? Like, it is not like he's, he's just not as, as stiff as I think he should be. You know, like most of my patterns, they're not going to squish nearly that much. This guy just flattens, especially right here at the top of the neck. So if you... If it's an overstuff or understuff question, I would overstuff just a little bit because it's going to like, you know, over time. Cause this one I made in 2018. So he's two years old. Um, and yeah, he's fallen. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was learning. I would have stuffed more now on that. That would be my thought there. Good morning, April Lee. Today we're doing a Q&A. So if you guys have questions, I will share my thoughts. Um, I'm going to check Facebook really quick and see if I have any questions from people there. Do, do, do. All right, I'm not seeing any questions there on Facebook. Alessandra says, are those little roses on the pig and panda? <laughs> yes. Um, oh, yeah, on the, on the narwhal and the panda. Oh, quite a while ago, yeah, in 2018, um, I had this idea, like, I wanted to, to try making flowers. And I was going through all of my, my project bins the other day and, like, assessing what yarn I had, what I needed for other projects and just like trying to really get a handle on what was going on. And I found some of the flowers. So I just, you know, put it on <laughs> for fun. And uh, that one I stuck on a bobby pin and, you know, it was just fun. <laughs> yeah, it's the narwhal. Um, JB says, yeah, JB says, do I see a flower crown in the background? Yeah, that was, it was an old one, but I was just like, you know what? I should, I should just do it. Just put them on. It was, it's fun. Um, all right. So Teresa asks, she would like to know what type of yarn I use with my chubbies. Um, 
So I use a uh, Bernat blanket yarn. So it's a size six. Um, so you said you're working on the donkey. So it's this one. Um, and so if you're, if you're using Bernat blanket yarn, I don't have an end to pull out, but you know, it's, it's this size. Um, it, that should, it should work up to be a, not a huge project. Um, if you're using Bernat blanket extra, let me see if I can pull it out. It will work up to be like three times bigger than this. So yeah, this is Bernat blanket extra size versus the normal. So you can see like how much bigger this yarn is than this one. So that's going to be, like, if you happen to be using this one, it, it is going to be huge. It'll be fun and cute and cuddly, but it'll be huge. Um, <clears throat> um, the, one, the one thing I do want to say on this Bernat Blanket Extra yarn, and I might, I don't know, I might make a video or review something on this a little bit, is that I, I love how textured it is. I love how soft it is but the magic ring is almost impossible. So just keep that in mind if you're going to use this for a project. I know Golden was asking if she could, uh, you know, what the pattern was for the large panda. The same as the chubby panda, it's just using this yarn. Um, but for like to, to use this yarn, I would not do a magic ring. I would do a chain two and then work in the, in the first chain, the, the rounds and then start from there, if that makes sense. So that should, should help you when you're using this. All right. Um, C says, I struggle to get my bobble stitches to come out as cleanly as yours. I get loose parts of the bobble when I join them all together. Do you have any advice to improve their definition? That is a good question. Um, Hmm. I, I, I'm really not thinking any of anything right off the top. See, I'm sorry to say that. Um, for me, it did come with a lot of practice. My first bobble stitches, let me show you here on my, my very first sheep I ever made, who's really filthy because my daughter played with her a lot. I had no idea what I was doing on my first one. And so this is what the bobbles looked like. And they also, they're also inside out because I didn't know what I was doing. There's, there's a lot of me admi admitting that I had no idea what I was doing when I first started, guys. And sometimes I still don't, but you know, I'm learning. So so yeah, I, I would say practice helps a lot. Um, my, yeah, my one other thought is like, as you're as you're making the bob the individual stitches that make up the bobble, try and keep them as even as possible. Um, so I I hope that helps. I'm sorry I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have like maybe the best answer on that. Uh, Kaylin Lee says I can't download the PDF on the website. Kaylin, can you comment and tell me which which one you're talking about? Um, sometimes, so on my website, and I haven't been able to change this. It's just part of how it was set up. Um, you you have like a download period of 30 days, and sometimes, so you know, so after the 30 days, the download goes away for the patterns, and sometimes it'll also glitch a little bit. Just send me an email you know, make sure you give me your name and the email address that you use to buy the patterns. That way I can double check, make sure I can get you everything that you purchased. So that hopefully that'll take care of that. So Kaylin, go ahead and send me an email on that. Um, Sandra says, hello everyone. Uh, Valerie, do you use poly pellets and all your animals or just certain ones? Just on certain ones. Uh, most of them I don't. Um, let's see, I've used them mostly for projects that I want to stand up, but have a tendency to lean over. So we're talking about like the, the hedgehog. 
um, I, you know, I put in the pattern that you should put some, some pellets in the bottom to help it stay up because it wants to lay like this. Um, or like in the, the chubby cow or the chubby goat, um, the chubby goat, I forgot to put the pellets in. And so it does, it just falls, it leans right forward. Um, and I would say like try and stuff them in the back so that it can stay upright a little bit more. So that's what I use them for. And I don't usually use more than like a half cup. So I hope that helps. Deborah says, not sure how to phrase this. Are the differences in some of the directions, adding new color, using concentric circle spirals, etc., a result of experience and the organic process of designing? Yes. So Deborah, as I've been, as I've learned, um, you guys have heard me say a couple of times already today, like I don't, I didn't know what I was doing when I started out. And there was a, so much I really didn't know. Um, but, but I have learned a lot through the, the process of designing and trying new things. And so like, yes, um, working in concentric circles. I didn't learn that until um, someone I actually I think a couple of someone's when I'd done a vlog and was saying like I'm I just am really struggling with with like stripes and and nice color changes. Um, a couple of people sent me these videos saying like here's how you can do it, and so that really helped. And so like if I were to redo the um, the large panda pattern, which I probably will go through and update it. You know I would work it in concentric circles so you wouldn't have this jog here. Um, as it is, I tried, like I did what I could to make the jog, you know, the color transition row as seamless as possible, but it would look so much better without, like with working in concentric circles. Also, another thing that I um, have learned through the process, um, in my earlier patterns, um, I have this sort of like, so you can still kind of see it right here because I did use a green yarn. Um, but where I kind of like secure the head and the neck or the body and the head together and just kind of like bring those two rows together by weaving a piece of yarn throughout and pulling tight, which which works. Um, but I've learned since then that a better way to do it is to just do a row of slip stitches because slip stitches are nice and tight. Um, so so, yes, I, I have learned a lot as I progress and I haven't gone through and updated every single one of my patterns with the things that I've learned. Um, one, because I feel that a lot of them, like they, they still work, they stand alone fine. Um, and I'm afraid that if I jumped back into like updating every one that I'd ever made, um, that I would not like have the energy or the time to make more patterns. So that's why I haven't yet. I am, it, it is probably something I will do, especially for kind of the the earlier ones. Um, because it, it shouldn't take too much time. It just sounds like a really daunting task, so I haven't done it yet. So yes. Let's see. Do, do, do. Sylvia says, what patterns can we look forward to coming out for the rest of the year? It's an excellent question, Sylvia. So I, I have some plans for this year. Um, and I, I can kind of let you guys know those tentatively. Um, I, my only hesitation to like saying them is like, I don't know, maybe something happens and I'm, I'm not able to get those specific ones done. And so I need to alter and do some other ones. Um, <clears throat> so I'll tell you guys, but just kind of like know that it is up for some poss possibility of change in the future. So um, so the very, we can talk about ones that are definitely coming out because they're done. Um, so coming May 1st, we're going to have the baby monkey pattern coming out. Um, I should get the last of the feedback from testers today. Um, so I'll be able to update that all and get that pattern cleaned up and ready to go. So that's coming May 1st. Um, then June, we'll have the sloth. Um, I'm just about ready to send this guy to testers. Then in 
July. Mm-hmm. I have to look at my list. Where, where, did, where did I write it down? Um, in July, I think my plan is to, to make a penguin, a little baby penguin. Um, and then August, probably a chubby skunk. I've gotten a lot of suge- uh, requests for that one. September, I'm thinking a black cat. October, I'm thinking a turkey. The idea of this being like these more seasonal patterns would be out a month in advance. Um, So November would be the Woodland Christmas Ornament Collection. And then December, I'm thinking a Highland Cow. So for some of those, I already have like the yarn and it's in a project been behind me and ready to go. Some of them, not quite. Um, But that's kind of what we're looking at for the rest of the year. I do tend to be somewhat spontaneous and I like to just like sometimes a pattern will come to mind. And I'm like, I need to make this, you know? So, so we'll see. There might be some other kind of things that happen, but that's, that's kind of the rough plan. Rupa asks, what is your favorite color? Uh, my favorite color is purple. Um, I really like light purple on the verge of blue so sort of like i my i really dislike red purple i really love blue purple if that makes sense so kind of lean toward the blue good morning angie and mimi mimi says uh do i send my email on here or to somewhere else so mimi if you have an email to send me send it to valerie at old soul and i'll be able to do that. Um, Undercover Yarn Snob, fantastic name, says, I found that tensioning all the loops on your hook by pulling the hook up a bit before finishing the bobble helps me with the bobble stitches. Very nice. I like that. Kaylin says, hi again, you make your project attached to the blanket. What fabric do you use? I use fleece on my lovies. Um, Let's see. There's one I can pull up. Grab the pig really quick. So I like fleece because I'm actually really, really bad at crocheting blankets. It's a little embarrassing, but it's true. Um, so, so I use fleece because it's nice and soft. Um, also, you can just use a um, a rotary cutter and a skip blade to like put the little holes in it, so you can crochet through it. And for me, it's it's a pretty quick and easy project. And um, and kids tend to really like them. So let's see. Tammy asks, how are you and your family doing through these crazy shelter in place times, staying healthy and safe? Yes. Thank you, Tammy. Um, so far, everything is going good. Um, it's, it's definitely been a blessing that we moved to Idaho from Missouri. Um, where we were living in Missouri right now is on like pretty extreme lockdown. Like if you leave your house, you, um, can be fined. Um, whereas where we're living in Idaho, it's a lot more spread out, uh, much smaller population. And so the it, it's a little bit less strict. I mean, we're still staying home a lot, not going out hardly at all. Um, but, but if we do go out, we can like go out on a hike in the woods and like not see people. So it's really nice in that way. Um, it's, it's good to be able to have things that we can still go out and do with the three-year-old um, who doesn't do very well with just being cooped up inside. Um, so that's, we've been, we've been doing well still, you know, trying to stay home a lot, trying to not go into uh, big, busy public places and whatnot. So that's kind of what we're doing. Linda asks, um, I change color. The main reason you use, uh, Oh, yes. Is changing color the main reason you use concentric circles? I'm doing the baby otter next. Um, I would say yes. I feel like it also does, like one of the things, let me see if I can find a good example on one of my projects. So, yeah. So we'll use the narwhal. So one of the things that I also noticed that when you don't work in concentric circles, when you're working in a spiral, like the beginning and the end, like, like the rows aren't flat. They're a little bit slanted. And so this is super nitpicky, but if you like look here at the narwhal, we've got like this eye 
is kind of sitting right on the edge. So we've obviously got a row change right here. So it's like kind of in row one, two, three, four, but it's also kind of in row three. And so I placed it here, thinking one, two, three. It's kind of in row four at the bottom. So I bring it over to here on this side and it's in row four, one, two, three, four. But if you look at it straight on, this eye is obviously a lot lower than that eye. And so when when in the dis instructions, you know, I could say like place it in row, you know, this, this, and this, and, and you can still have ski wampus eyes. And so that's one of the, the reasons why it's like, well, crocheting in concentric circles helps to have a much more definite height, if that makes sense. Um, I still like crocheting in a spiral because it's faster and it's it's more meditative. And I think that a lot of people do crochet for the meditative aspect of it, you know, to just like have the rhythm keep going to help you um, kind of find peace. Hey, sweetie. Um, and so can you go find daddy? He's up. He's up. Yeah. Right now I'm talking to my crocheters. Can you go? Can you go talk to daddy, please? Yeah, I think he's coming to get you. Sorry, one moment. Hey, yeah, go go play with daddy. We'll do it in a minute. All right. So um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the concentric circle. So honestly, on the baby otter, if you want to just do it in a spiral, you can. Um, I noticed the same thing with the eyes that when you try and place them. Like you, you have to, you have to place them kind of irregardless of exactly where the row is um, and just make it look right. So, yeah. Emily says, will the baby monkey and the sloth be released to Patre Patreon subscribers on their release date? It, yes, exactly. Um, so actually the reason why I've been trying to be really good about releasing them on like the first of every month is so I can have that consistently for Patreon subscribers. So yes, um, if you guys didn't know, which I'm sure most of you do, I have a Patreon page where I put out a new pattern or multiple patterns every month. Um, and you pay $5 a month and get a new pattern each time. Um, so that is, that is the plan. May will be the baby monkey and June will be the sloth. And then we'll kind of move from there. Let's see, <clears throat> Jay Baby says she's looking forward to all of them. Nice, Angie says she's looking forward to the cats. Golden asks, what about the monkey lovey being released? So that's a good question, um, Golden. So when I, I made the baby monkey lovey first, you can see it here. Um, and I, I tweaked the monkey, where is the monkey? I tweaked the monkey head from this one that I made. So it's a, it's a little bit smaller and I like it better. So what I probably will do is um, take this head apart and make it the same as this one so that they have a more consistent look. So I still have to do that. I haven't done it yet, um, but once I get it done, it will be released. So that's <clears throat> that's going to be like one of the, the additional patterns that um, goes on Patreon that you would get. So when it, whenever month that would come out, you'd get probably two patterns for the five dollars. Um, and then it, it will also go up for sale on my website. I don't have a for sure like this is when I'm doing it. Um, I've got like it's it's kind of taken a back burner, but it is one of those like things that's on my to do list. So thank you for your question. I see my yarn fall off the bottom of my cup. Rupa says purple is her favorite color too. It's the best. Ali asks, how, how do you make a pattern from scratch? So that's a good question. Um, one of the things I often do is <clears throat> I start by either finding inspiration, looking online for like pictures of certain types of animals or, um, <clears throat> or like cute artist sketches because that kind of helps get, get me inspired. Um, or if I have an idea come to my mind, I'll try and sketch it out. So I know what I want to be making. Um, <clears throat> and then I just kind of start crocheting. It's, um, it, and, and it's all guesswork. The truth is, it's all guesswork. Um, just 
crocheting, um, like, like thinking, okay, so like, like as you, as you do it, you learn things, you know, you learn how certain rows work up. Mm -hmm. And, um, so like, let's take the, the chubby panda, for example. So he has kind of a flat bum. Um, but I, you couldn't, in my opinion, achieve a sort of flat bum. If you started with a magic ring with six single crochets, crochets in it, that would make it a little bit pointy. Um, so I started with eight and then I knew I wanted it to increase kind of flatly. So I went ahead and did, uh, increase eight. So I had 16 in the next row. Um, so a lot of it is trial and error. You know, you make a couple of rows and you guys, I tear out so much. Like I frog and I frog and I frog and I frog all the time. Often I'll go like two or three rows forward and then frog back down to like the first row or I'll get up to like five or six and then I'll frog back to two or three because it's all just trying to figure out kind of how the shaping is going. Um, and, and you definitely learn things just just as you go. Let's see. Uh, Alessandra says the hobby lamb behind you. Uh, is it using the same pattern as the one already on your website and just modified? Um, pretty much this one. I, I haven't ever written up the pattern for this exactly. Um, but it's like you could definitely take the Shelly sheep head. Um, and then so this is like this part is not nearly as big as like the Shelly sheep body. This would be kind of like the last. Let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ish, maybe rows of the sheep and uh, make up something for down here. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's basically the same. If you wanted to make a hobby horse, um, I would start with it. Sorry, a hobby sheep. I would start with the Shelly sheep pattern and then you know, just kind of have fun with it from there. If you guys want, I can write up a pattern for this. Try again. I I haven't really gotten much uh, desire for anything other than the unicorn hobby horse. Um, my my sister Marie did ask me. She was like, "Hey, when are you going to make more like rideable stick animals? I need I need things for my kids." So who knows? I think Golden just asked if I'm going to make any. Any more different animals like the hobby unicorn? Unicorn, um, and I do hope to, hope to someday because I think it would be really fun. Oh, Rachel's saying we should make a dragon. That would be fun. That'd be really fun. So yeah, it's <clears throat> if yeah if you if you guys think that would be fun, let me know, um, and maybe we'll work on doing uh doing some things like that good morning Rachel I hope you're doing well hello Susan good morning Jackie let's see other questions Kaylin says can you explain to me how the written products on your website work um so you just buy a pattern so it's, it's a pdf download so you'd go and you would um you know, you'd add it to the cart, you do all of the checkout. And then the very last page, once you've bought the pattern is a download. And so it will, um, you can download it right then and there. Um, and then you just save it on your computer or on whatever device. I recommend saving it on a computer. That way, you know, you've got that backup. Um, if you need to, yeah, like if you have it on the computer, then you can like make copies if you need to, like maybe for your iPad or um, like to keep on your phone or in a Google Docs or something like that. Cause I really don't want you guys to like lose the pattern. Um, and if you ever do lose a pattern, just email me, let me know. I'll get it to you. Cause I, yeah, I want you guys to be taken care of. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that helps. Teresa asks, what does frog stand for? Um, so <laughs> I actually looked this up when I was first starting and, and learning things. Um, frogging is is given the name because when you rip it out really fast like the rip it sounds like ribbit 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 so it's that's why it's called frogging and i think it's fun to say rather than like 
tearing it out. So, yes. Let's see. Deborah says, I just want to say that I think your patterns are very well written. Thank you. Um, so I've been crocheting for over 40 years. And so I've used all sorts of patterns. Very nice. I can tell the amount of work you put into them. Thank you, Deborah. I really appreciate that. Good morning, Donna. How are you? Um, let's see. Donna says, um, I know we all have our favorite animals we're looking forward to being released, but do you have a personal favorite? What do you want to make or have made already? That is a good question. I like that. Um, I, I will be honest. I really want to make a big dragon, like a big dragon. Um, I'm excited about the idea. I'm also like terrified by the idea. So when I just went through and like kind of told you guys what I'm planning for the rest of the year, big dragon was not on the list because I'm like so intimidated by the image in my mind that I just don't, I don't know if I could do it justice. So, so like, it's, it's not an official, like, this is something I am going to make, but it's something I really want to make. So like, I've, I've, you know, been thinking like, okay, what, what colors would I do? What yarn, you know, that sort of a thing. Um, I've done a lot of sketches trying to figure out how I would get this thing to go together. Um, so that's, that, that is the one that's, you know, that I'm really looking forward to really hoping would turn out well. Also, every once in a while, I'll get like flashes of ideas for a peacock and I'm like, oh, I should do that. Oh, I should try that. So I'm excited to do, th to do that one as well someday. That one's going to have to be made basically out of like Burnett Blanket Brights, which my local Joann's doesn't carry brights at all. So I'm going to have to find a different way to get those. Um, <clears throat> But I've, I've got quite a few other projects planned for the year. So, so those two will be ones that like maybe I could get done this year. But it's it's more of like a, I, I'm not putting pressure on myself to do them for fear that putting pressure on myself would take away the fun of it, if that makes sense. So thank you for asking, Donna. Good morning, Heather. Hello, Donna Doolittle. Um, Haley asks, what is my favorite yarn brand? Um, I almost always use Burnett Blanket Yarn because I like how it's soft. I think it makes really cute um, amigurumi. Um, and it's it's also hardier than like Ver Burnett Velvet or like any kind of velvet yarn out there. I love how soft velvet yarns are, um, but they, they tear really badly if you're like going to try and rip it out. So that's why... I, uh, I don't use those ones, but they're beautiful. So Burnett Blanket Yarn, I'd have to say, is my favorite, at least for now. Let's see. Undercover Yarn Snob says, yes, more hobby animals would be great. And I would love to see uh, how cute of a dragon you would come up with. All right. Well, thanks. Let's see, Rachel's saying she would love to see a dragon in the animal design. Very nice. Oh, and Susan Gardner is, is commenting on losing your patterns when you don't have hard copies. And I am so sorry to hear that. You, yeah, that, that was a tragedy when I read about you losing your patterns. I was like, oh, oh no. But yes, if you lose your patterns, just email me. Don't rebuy them, okay? Just, yeah, just let me know. I'll take care of you guys. Uh, Say Rachel suggesting crimson for a dragon. That would be very nice. I'd love that. Kaylin and Jackie are saying a moose. That would be fun. I, I would love to do a moose. Um, the Mimi says, uh, Valor, you said patterns are made through inspiration. Well, what inspires you to do animals and not typical dolls? Or have you done dolls? That is a really good question, Mimi. So I, um, so honestly, what inspires me to make animals is the yarn itself. So the Burnett blanket yarn, just hold up the donkey, is a chenille style yarn. So it's it's soft and fluffy. And, um, and so I feel like that works really well for animals because it has that sort of, you know, a animals often are a little textured, a little fluffy, you know, they've got hair all over them. 
Whereas, you know, as, as humans, we have skin, like, yeah, we've got, you know, we've got some arm hairs, like we've got hair on the top of our head, but we're not really a fluffy style, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so, and so I, like the idea of doing dolls with this yarn doesn't resonate with me, if that makes sense, Mimi. Um, but I did try one. Um, because, because it was, it was like one day, a couple of weeks ago, I just thought, you know what? I should just try. I'm not going to write it down. I'm not going to put like pressure on myself. I'm just going to try it. We're just going to see. And so I brought it over here just in case someone asked me a question about a doll today. And, uh, and I'll show you. Um, so, so she's, uh, not very well done because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't write down the pattern, as I said. Um, and also my husband named her because my daughter found her and now my daughter's just like taken her over. She plays with her all the time. Um, and she's a mermaid and her name is Sushi. So this is Sushi. Like I said, my husband named her. Um, and I, I didn't even finish. No eyes, no nose, no mouth. I, I was just trying to figure out like if I could stand making dolls and, and I, it's fine ish, but I don't love it. Like I don't, I, I don't, yeah, there it's, it was just, I don't know. I probably will try making a doll again. Like I probably will do a second attempt at, at this mermaid and, and do a better job. Um, but it was, I, I just, there's so much that I don't like about a doll with this yarn. But at the same time, I love using this yarn. I love how fast it works up. I love uh, the texture. I love that if you need to, you can wash it and you don't have to worry about that. You know, like it's going to be fine. So um, honestly, the thing that I love about this doll only, like it's her hair. Let me show you that. I was really happy with her hair. <laughs> Everything else, I was like, Mah. but but her hair was fun, and because her hair was fun, it's also like way heavy. So it's like, <laughs> her head's by far the heaviest thing on her. Um, and I will say the the other reason why dolls that that I get kind of hesitate when it comes to dolls is um, body image. Like if you're making animals, you don't have to worry so much about <clears throat> like body image and stereotypes and like, you, you know, like if you, if you think about all of the dolls that get hated on because they have like unrealistic body types, Barbie being like the poster child of, you know, Girl, like little girls wanting to grow up to look like Barbie because she's a standard of beauty, but she's completely unrealistic and yada, yada, yada. I mean, there's a lot in there and, you know, and I would be a, like, there's a, a hesitation in me to like make something that it's like, are little girls going to think like, oh, I should grow up and I should look like this. And it's like, but no, it's a doll, you know, like, I don't know if that makes any sense. So that's, um, those are my hesitations for dolls. Um, and like hands, hands are hard. I just made nubs. And then on this one, cause this was a, just an experiment. I did a bobble stitch like for a thumb and then a nub. And I just don't know. that. I just don't know that I like any of it. I like the hair. The hair was fun. And the rest of it's just kind of like, meh. But that's, that is my opinion. All right, so let's see. I'm going to back up just a little bit because I was chatting for quite a while about uh, dolls and whatnot. Um, let's see. Kaylin saying I can make a kangaroo. That would be fun, I think. Yes. I have that list. That is definitely on my, my master list. Donna says, uh, it sounds like the big dragon will really challenge you as a designer. Yes, I think it will too. And it will feel so good to figure it out and get it done. And she hopes I have a blast creating it. Thank you, Donna. I am excited too. Like that one should be really fun. Um, Deborah says, I'm running on the 
back up on my laptop right now so I don't lose them while my printer is down. Smart. Very good. Uh, Undercover Yarn Sub says, I made another six or seven velvet chubby bunnies this Easter. Everyone loves them so much. That is awesome. I love that. See Susan seconding. She loves a kangaroo. Golden says, what about the lion I was working on a while ago? Yeah, I need to do that one too. <laughs> I want to really, it's been hard. I really haven't thought much of the lion since I tore it apart a while ago. And honestly, I think with the lion, what I'll do is I'll probably try and make a baby lion first. That way I can get the proportions figured out. Um, <clears throat> Because like starting to make a big one, especially when I'm not exactly sure how I want to like shape the head and whatnot, can be kind of a challenge. So I'll probably make a baby one first so I can kind of figure out what I'm doing as far as, as shape and whatnot. And then I'll make a big one. Thanks for your question on that. All right, now I'm getting to the cute comments where you guys like sushi. Thank you. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys like her. Um, Mimi says she loves the animals. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for asking the question, Mimi. And thank you guys all for asking questions. This has been um, a good q and I'm very, very glad. Uh, Deborah says, what are the recommendations for washing these animals? <clears throat> all right. So my recommendation is um, to hand wash them when they're dirty. I would use like... <clears throat> On the ones I've washed, I've used like a stain remover, like sprayed them a little bit um, with a stain remover and then let it sit for however long is needed and then wash it, hand wash it with my hands. Then when you're all done, <clears throat> you want to wrap, wrap it up in a towel to get the water out as much as possible. And when, when it's as dry as you can get it with a towel, then you can just throw it in the dryer and just like tumble dry low until it's done. That is my suggestion. All right, see you later, Rachel. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Debbie says, is it possible to get the pattern for the owl on the shelf? Um, we're talking about Henry the Great over here or uh, the snowy owl, who I also decked out in her Hufflepuff um, cowl because I was going through my stuff and found it. <laughs> Um, it, either way, both of those patterns are on my website. Um, once again, Henry the Great Horned Owl and then just the Snowy Owl right there. Let's see, Jill says my granddaughters, granddaughters would love the mermaid. I would say that that is the one reason why I consider making dolls is because I do see how much my daughter prefers to play with a doll versus all of the other stuffed animals I've made her. Like I think some kids, are animal, like they love the animals and some kids love dolls. And I think my daughter is a doll lover. And so that is, <clears throat> that is one of the reasons why I'm like, well, maybe I, maybe I would, you know, venture into dolls. Um, I might have to, I don't know, I've got things to think about, but yeah. Anyway, good morning, Virgie. I hope you're doing well. Deborah says, stick to what you love making. There are more animals than lifetimes to make. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> there, are, there are lots. Every once in a while, I'll have, um, I'll have friends who are like, hey, here are some ideas. You could like make this or this. And it, it'll be like uh, animal inspired things, which I think is really fun. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I haven't even finished all the animals yet. Like, there's so much to do. Uh, Lucy says she would love to see a painted wolf. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure what a painted wolf is versus a normal wolf. Maybe you could send me a an email or something with an image. Virgie says, someone wanted the alpaca I posted, so I grudgingly sold it. The buyer is excited to get it and is naming it alpaca <laughs> uh, Alpaca Cino. That is kind of funny. But also, yeah. It it is hard when you sell your work, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Susan says, when I did a lion, I found the head becomes heavy because of the mane. I could definitely, definitely see that. Um, yeah, like making the hair for sushi, like her, her head is pretty heavy. But anyway, I could, I could see how a mane would make it 
kind of big and heavy. So we'll see. Let's see. Golden says it would be nice to do a pattern for the doll made, mermaid just to have one made up. And, and I, I might, I might, we'll see. Like I'm not, I'm not 100%. I do have more yarn for it, even set aside in a bin labeled mermaid. <laughs> so I probably will try again. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Virgie says when you run out of animals, you can do an animal mashup. Yeah, I could. That could be kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, I do want to try, like, on my mind also has been, like, mythical creatures, you know, dragons, uh, mermaid of myth and legend, um, <clears throat> and maybe, like, playing around with some other types of things like that. Debbie says, what would your top tip for a new crocheter be? Um, patience. Patience with yourself. Grace. Understand, like, it is going to take a while for you to get the hang of tensioning and counting stitches and stuff like that. Um, and just, just be patient with yourself. That is my top tip. Because if you're not patient with yourself, like it's, you're, you're not going to be able to get through that initial grind of trying to figure it out to be able to really continue with it. Um, and personally, I would say continuing with it is the best because it, it does after that grind, it becomes a space of like meditative peacefulness and calm. At first you're just like, rah, 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 rah. the other day I tried to, to um, teach myself how to crochet left-handed. And I was just like, how do people crochet? This is insane. This is ridiculous. Because, you know, just trying to to figure out like how to tension, how to hold things, how to, it was, it was mind boggling for me. And I can basically do it in my sleep right-handed, but left-handed I'm useless. So patience. Let's see. Susan says, how do you work around when one part of the body is very heavy? It's a good question, Susan. Could you maybe explain a little bit more what you're talking about so I can answer it better? Uh, Lori says the hair on sushi is amazing. I prefer the animals though at the moment. I get that. Yeah, the hair was the most fun. Like there was a part of me that was like, if I could make a standard doll body and never have to make another one again, and then I could just make all these fun hairstyles like that would be worth doing dolls over because that would just be so much fun to come up with like clothes and hair. I thought that sounded exciting. Maybe someday, <laughs> maybe someday I'll get, I'll get around to doing that. Undercover yarn stops says Griffin. Yes. Yes. With the mythical creatures. I, I've started a list. It doesn't mean I, I would get to all of them, but like, and the mythical creatures I want to make is like griffin, dragon, centaur, mermaid, maybe a satyr, a fairy, a phoenix, a unicorn, a pegasus, maybe a werewolf, maybe a kelpie, maybe Cerberus, three-headed dog. I don't know. You know, just thinking of stuff. We'll see. <clears throat> Once again, none of those are like on my official list for being done this year, but they're kind of the, this could be fun. Maybe I'll experiment with it. Let's see. Tammy says, I think the mermaid is cute. And Roxanne says she likes the mermaid. Thank you. Um, but she also thinks it's nice that uh, my daughter has a one-of-a-kind item made uh, by you for her. Yeah, I think it's pretty sweet. I hope that as she gets older, she realizes, like, that she feels that it's special that she has some things made by me. So. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Susan says, so if the head is heavy and it causes the animal to fall over and not stand up, how do you fix that so it stands or sits up properly? Hmm. So my my only thought on that would be to like reinforce maybe the neck. Um, you could do that by like cinching it down a little bit using yarn to like weave through the bottom of the, the head 
on the top of the neck and kind of weave it and tighten it down like that. Um, or if it's still open, you could do more stuffing in there. Um, I've heard people say things about like, like using like hair curler rolls things like the, the, yeah, the, the foam part of that and like stuffing those in spots that, like a neck that needs to be supported, something like that. Let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, Debbie, said, Debbie talking about the, the patient's comment. She said, thank you. I'm struggling with tension. I'll keep plugging away at it. Yeah, that's that would <clears throat> be what I would do. Just do a little more practice. Virgie says, I missed the sushi talk, but we've been making sushi with the sushi bazooka we got from Amazon, and it's great. <laughs> that's awesome. So, Virgie, the the name that my husband gave this doll, because this the story of this doll was I made it a while ago, didn't like it, just kind of threw it in one of my like bins underneath my desk. And I was like, whatever. Um, then my daughter found it and pulled it out. And she was like, you know, decided this is hers, which is fine. She can have it. Um, and so that, but she took it right over to my husband and was like, what's her name? And he was just like, sushi. So that this is, this is sushi. So that's what all of that was. So, yeah. All right, Kaylin's saying I could make a steak. Snake, not a steak. Yes, a snake. That would be fun. Be kind of cool to try and get the like curvature. Golden's saying, what about a duck? A duck is on my master list. I don't know when that will happen, but it will. <laughs> and Barbara says, I'm curious what the pink one over your shoulder is. Does it have a flower headband? So yes, right now the, the narwhal is just wearing a flower crown. Um, I made this crown a long time ago, two years ago, at least that feels like a long time, at least for me, uh, in my crochet journey. Um, cause I was thinking about like trying to do flowers and stuff and yeah. And so I just put it on it for fun, you know, for spring, spring flavor. Yes. Let's see. Tammy says, are you still considering making a corgi dog? I would love that. Absolutely. It is on the master list. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I definitely want to. In fact, I saw a corgi the other day. I was like, they're so cute. I want to make one so bad. So many things to do. Uh, thank you for everyone in the chat who's trying to help out uh, Debbie and also helping out um, Susan with the, the different questions they've asked. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> Very nice. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for, yeah, for chatting to each other and, and being so helpful. Teresa asked, have, you, have I thought about a chicken or a rooster? And the answer is yes. Um, that one's kind of been a struggle for me. I've, I've had, when I came out with the farmhouse ornaments last year, I had people asking if I could also make a duck and a chicken to go with the farmhouse ornaments. And I, I liked the idea, but I haven't, like I haven't quite gotten to where it makes sense in my mind how I would make them. Um, and so like my parents have chickens. And so I've been, I've actually been like looking at the chickens being like, all right, how do I, how do I crochet you into an animal? Like, because I, I know like, because it, it's crochet stuff, like it has a little bit of a cartoony look, but it doesn't, I feel like my style is a little bit on the more realistic side, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think if there's a good way to explain it. Like, like I'm trying to make them look like the animals, not look like a cartoon character. Um, and so I don't want to have like a really cartoonish looking chicken. I want it to look kind of realistic. And so that's the part that I'm really struggling with for a, a like uh, the horse, not sorry, the horse. I just read a comment briefly and that's what jumped into my mind. So, but that's what I'm struggling with for like a duck and um, a chicken <clears throat> is kind of, trying to figure out in my mind like how I would do them so that they looked believable I think the duck would be easier than a chicken 
but that's yeah that's just kind of where i am uh golden says it would be nice to make a horse you have the chubby horse and the horse ornament uh needs a bigger horse yeah i think a bigger horse would be fun as well absolutely um <clears throat> Hello. See, we've got someone here in the chat saying I'm Korean, but I'm good at English, so I came to this channel once. Hello. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's see. Susan says, my mom would love a chicken. She has 12 real ones and loves them so much, so she would love that. Yeah. It, it would be a it, it would be a fun one to do. I just I just haven't quite gotten like to where I feel like I can do it. So it is, it is on the list. It's still one that I like think about on, well, I, th I think thinking about crocheting stuff almost all the time. Basically, if I see an animal, I'm like, could I crochet that? Sometimes even I'll see ones that I've already made. Like the other day I saw this really cute picture of a whale and I was like, I should crochet a whale. And then I was like, I did that two years ago. <laughs> anyway. And I've, I've got lots of other things to do anyway. So, yep. <laughs> Rachel's saying maybe a mallard duck. And Susan is saying kangaroo before the chicken, please. <laughs> I'll, I, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, a kangaroo would be fun. I honestly, I have, I have kangaroo written in my to be determined for like, February of 21 because I was just kind of trying to schedule out so I have I have that written down as like maybe this is what I'll be working on but I have no idea I have no idea let's see golden is asking uh, if she could have my address that's a good question what I need to do is get a p.o box um so I can have have that for my business for Happy Mail, and I just haven't done it yet. So when I get that done, I will let you know. Golden, Jackie's saying a kangaroo, a kangaroo with a joey, that would be dang cute. Yes, yes, indeed. Ah, so many fun things to make, huh? So little time. Not really. I mean, we've got all the time in the world, right? Linda's asking where uh, there's a good place to buy fleece online. Um. I like to use personally Joanne's Lux fleece. Um, I think it's the highest quality. Um, so, so I would I would go through them. I think they probably do have like a minimum amount you can order for shipping. If you go into the store, which I mean, no one's going into stores these days. So, th so this would be. Uh, I don't know, a recommendation for in the future. If you go into the store to Joann's, you can get just like, like you can buy up to this as small as an inch. So which is why a lot of my patterns like recommend like five inches of fleece because that's all you need for the ears, the hands, the feet. Because you can do that. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah, Linda's saying at Joann's, you have to buy a two yard minimum. Yeah, so I could definitely see why that would be a challenge. Um, and I, I, I haven't bought fleece online. I have only gone into the store. It's been a long time since I've bought fleece, actually, because I haven't been working as much on on lovies. And the last couple patterns I've made, they haven't had as like I haven't really used fleece that much because I this year I've come out with three, four. Yeah, four chubby animals, the goat, the cow, the horse, the donkey, which don't use fleece. And then I came out with the koala, which doesn't use fleece. And I'm coming out with the sloth, which doesn't use fleece. Uh, but the baby monkey and the monkey lovey do. So those are the only two. And I've just been using this the leftovers I've had from other projects on those. So I really haven't been out to buy fleece in a while. So Golden is suggesting a raccoon. Yeah, that would be a very nice one. Susan's saying it's 1 a.m. here, so I'll say bye. Good night, Susan. Thank you for hopping on and chatting with us. I appreciate that. And thank you for all your good questions. This has been, it's been awesome. Very good to have a Q&A. Now, Linda says she can't wait for the stores to open again. Yeah, it will be good. It will be good. 
So guys, we have been chatting here for an hour and five minutes, so I should probably call it for now um, and chat with you guys next week. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, I should probably get outside and, and help my husband manage my daughter. <laughs> anyway, uh, Golden asked, how much did you make for the koala bear? So I will update with you guys on that for the very last. It should be next week. Let me see what. Yep. Next week, Saturday, I will be able to have the total of what we made on the koala patterns. So far, it's over $800. Um, so, but I'll be able to give that that a final total next Saturday. So looking forward to that. Alrighty, everyone have a good weekend. And thank you all for your questions. This has been, it's been really fun. I'm glad you guys had questions and that I was able to give some answers or feedback um, instead of me just sitting here being like, I don't know what to say. So take care, everyone. Have a good week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Love you tons. Bye.